Hi, I'm Paula Prince Burton, and I'm here with Fran Brown out at The Connection. I'm sitting in our prayer room right now and just wanted to speak with you guys a little bit about The Connection and what we've been working on and what we've been doing. In June, the conference asked St. Mark if we would be willing and or like to take on a third campus. And we voted unanimously with one abstaining vote as church council to do so. And it has been quite an adventure since then. Um, this church is meant to be for this community and it's meant to be a present for this community. And we have all been so happy to be a part of the process of opening God's new church in Cornaca. Um, there are within a five mile radius of this building 32 to 57 percent of the population that either do not attend any church or only nominally attend church. And so that is 2,000 people that could potentially be affected by God's love right here on the corner of 246 and 72. Um, since we started, we split off into teams so that we could separate tasks and try to handle things more easily. And the teams are, we've had a worship team, a children and youth team, a facilities team, a finance team, a prayer team, a communications, media, and events team, um, an information system and audiovisual team, and a follow-up team. And all of the teams met regularly, um, I would say at least once a week for the first three to four months and it's tapered off slightly but we began meeting out here as soon as we could set tables up and get in it was important for us to be here and be in the community and watch the people at the red light ride by and think of the people that we were here for and what we were trying to do and lo and behold a few short months later we're days away from our dress rehearsal and almost just a day or two past a week away from launch and it's very exciting. I think we can walk around and look and I'd love to show you guys some of the things that God has helped make happen in this church that we of course didn't think would be possible at all because of funding or because of other you know limitations. So let's go look around. All right. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what we're calling our leader services, which have been leading us into long. We have had several, and we had one this past Sunday. We've had a, um, a guest worship leader with us. His name is Phil Byers, and he's actually helping us build our own team. We've had a lot of raw material come forward, a lot of people that are interested but slightly intimidated by the prospect. and. God has just really had his hand on that too and later on this evening they're actually getting together and I'm encouraged to while I paint listen to, to what happens. Uh, we've had some children's moments and even in what some people would consider a practice service I have had just children all around my knees, children I've never met before that have been a guest or, or with you know a neighbor that was attending and um, little kids running up and down the hall and we're prepared and we have our children's literature and our curriculum ready and we're excited about that. We're going to offer our children's ministry during the worship hour. That's just how we're launching. We don't really know what will happen or if we need a Sunday school, but that's where we're beginning. And uh, we're very, very encouraged by that. And, um, the people we've been giving out bookmarks with some information, phone numbers and things and people just are, every time we stop and speak with someone, they're just like, oh good, March 5th, I'm so excited, I was wondering when that new little church was going to open. So um, we thank you so much for your continued support and prayers uh, as we proceed and we're encouraged at conference is working closely with us to help figure out some of our needs. Um, I know that funding is probably on everybody's minds and whether or not um, you know it's a good idea but that that has all really been worked out by and God has had his hand on that as well the funds that we felt like we had to have to do the the cabinet and to fin fix the floors and to do some of those small things for launch um, Council covered that cost when they agreed to, to give us $14,000.
But St. Mark has turned around and has given the connection close to nine or $10,000 above and beyond that. And when you get $1,000 discounts from Safe Sanctuary doors or floors and so many of the other things that have just worked themselves out, funding is not an issue for us. We're in really good shape and conferences allotted a certain amount and uh, the steering team, which is the pastors and Richard Ball and myself, have been in close contact with Sarah White and she's, you know, helping us figure out how we would like had to have those funds dispersed and what are our next priorities. Um, and she's been very encouraged by what we have been sharing with her to help us understand too, um, you know, not to be in love with the building and we'll live with bathrooms for a while because hopefully so many people will show up that we're gonna be spending a whole lot more money than we think we will on donuts and coffee for Sunday morning fellowships. Um, how many people did y'all have this past Sunday at the um, practice service, approximately? I think probably about 40 or 50. That was good. <clears throat> and that was a closed service this coming Sunday on the 26th. Um, I think the invitation has been extended for anyone that would like to come from any St. Mark campus to come and join us as well. I know you've had some other um, launch services. Were they... We've had our community events. We, we held a Santa Paul's event on the front, front steps and our church council chair, Chuck Strong, was, he's steering as well, Brian Waldrop as well. Um, he was our Santa Claus and Humane Society partnered with us and we had 35 families come and have their pictures, their, their pictures of their pets made with Santa. We met a lot of really nice people who are going to come back. That's what they said. And we've had our candlelight service and we had uh, fire pits and s'mores and apple cider. And we're actually having another um, community fireside social is what we're choosing to call them this Friday evening. And this one is just for fun. And we're going to roast hot dogs and make s'mores and have some music on in the background and get to know our neighbors. Um, so we and we're planning a lot of those kinds of things so that we can be of service to the community um, our craft fair our craft show uh, we're going to do that on April 8th and you notice the chairs in the worship center um, and we needed it to be a multifunctional space and that's why we chose to just keep a few pews around the building but to remove them there um, we already have 19 vendors signed up for our craft fair and so that that room will be full of arts and crafts and vendors as well what times from when to when i think it's going to be from 10 to 1 but renee owens is pinning down all the details on that that's an ongoing process for for that community event okay. when we we've um wayne and lily and i have gone and met and the people and worshiped with them at Carnaca baptist and at mount zion baptist and those were the two churches that had a long-standing relationship with Bethlehem United Methodist Church. And for many, 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 many years, they partnered together with holiday meals and things. And we could not have received a warmer welcome. And they were just thrilled for us to be bringing church back and this not being sold and turned into something commercial. And they're, they're just so happy to, to partner with us to do kingdom work. and. They're wonderful neighbors, and we've, we've just been encouraged every time we've turned around. A conference has also decided to give us some protected, allocated money to support a, a campus pastor. And while it would be a St. Mark pastor, this person would be expected to, to have more responsibility here than at the other campuses. And they've agreed to um, amounts between early 40s to just over 45,000 I think to support that. Um, we're also working with conference to see about hiring a paid nursery person because I think that it's so vital and important for the families that are here and I already know I have babies coming. I've already met them. I already know I have single mothers coming because I've met them but it's really important that those moms have time to worship and those moms have time to know that their children are taken care of and 
and are learning how much God loves them without worrying and without necessarily even having to take a turn being under their lap. Um, we also, somewhere down the road and working with Julie and Jennifer Macy about some uh, additional help with the children's program. But again, because I'm not exactly sure who God has invited and how many people God has invited, we'll work through that as we, as we come to that and figure that out.